to the next episode of vSphere Breakroom Chats. I'm Glenn Simon, Product Marketing Manager for vSphere. In this series, we bring VMware experts to talk about VMware's vSphere and related technologies. Today's episode, we're talking about vSphere's supervisor services. Our expert today is Jeremy Wolf, Product Line Manager for vSphere and leader of our Kubernetes integration. Welcome, Jeremy. Hey. So, uh, before we talk about what exactly are supervisor services, uh, tell us about why we created supervisor services in the first place. So what what problems are we trying to solve? Yeah, of course. I mean, so supervised services were actually introduced in uh, the 7.x branch of vSphere, um, but we mo most recently in the U1 release expanded the offering so that you could utilize supervisor services in kind of a in in more of the customer environments. So originally it was restricted to just the NSX NSX based environments. Now we support it in a VDS environment as well. And so kind of the key thing there is we're trying to provide a an IaaS platform. So we have the supervisor, the supervisor cluster is all Kubernetes, and we want to be able to provide VI admins with the ability to bring in um, infrastructure services and services that their application and consumer users require, because no modern application, no even traditional application can operate within kind of a vacuum of just runtime. Okay, so you mentioned VI admins. So are they pretty much the only people who care about this or are there maybe some other folks within IT or within the organization that might be really excited about supervisor services? Yeah, so I mean, primarily this is about enabling the DevOps consumers. So a lot of these services that we, we see as coming onto the IaaS platform through the supervisor service framework are actually going to have direct impact on the individual consumers themselves. So what's interesting about this pattern is it's the VI admin or platform operator who's gonna bring the service in. They'll be the ones responsible for lifecycle managing it. They'll do all of that work through vCenter, but the end goal really is making it so that the life of the developer, the DevOps consumer is better and that they can much, or they should be able to really be able to achieve their line of business requirements much faster. Okay. So, so let's talk a little about what exactly are supervisor services. Now, you 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 mentioned um, this is really kind of an extension of our Kubernetes integration. So, obviously, customers uh, need that. Uh, they need to have our Kubernetes integration, which is part of vSphere Plus. It's part of vSphere Enterprise Plus as well. But um, so, tell us. Um, so, what you know? What are exactly the supervised services, and how would people be able to actually access them? Yeah, so um, supervisor services are an extension, or I should say they are taking advantage of a Kubernetes pattern called the operators pattern. Um, and the idea is that an operator is a construct or a controller that is being created that um, essentially will implement the things that a human operator would do. So it is going to manage the creation of services, instances of those services. It's going to lifecycle manage them. It's going to manage the upgrade process. It's even going to, in advanced cases, be able to monitor the health of the individual um, instances that are running in your consumer's um, namespaces, for example. So it really is providing this full ecosystem that you, you go through the processes of EI admin of installing this service. And then once it's in place, they're able to kind of be hands off until they want to bring in a new version of that, that uh, service. So that said, there are kind of three different types that we we're currently working on. Um, one of them is core, meaning that it's in box. It comes um, as part of the platform. You don't really need to do anything. Examples of that are like the VM service or the TKG service. Um, then we have our curated versions of supervisor services. These are things that you'll be able to find in a um, supervisor service catalog at vmware.com slash go slash supervisor dash service. Um, if you go there, you'll be able to see a list of all of the curated services. And when I say curated, what I mean is these are fully supported by um, VMware and our partners. So partners being groups like MinIO, um, Dell, and Cloudium. So in this, these patterns, those ones are fully supported, meaning that you can come directly to VMware support, and we are going to be able to provide um, support at all levels within that space. And then the third category are um, non-partnered independent software vendors and 
um, also a space that we kind of envision for the future of um, consumer specific services where you're able to package your own services and bring them through this exact same framework and make them available to your consumers. So those curated services, it looks like that link you provided, uh, GitHub link. Yep. Um, we'll we'll add that link to the uh, YouTube video description. So if, if any of you missed that, just take a look at the video description for that link. Uh, okay, so it's, that sounds interesting. So what, um, so let's talk about, so this is kind of a consumer, a sort of a provider consumer model, right? So if you're a consumer, what, what types of things will you be able to accomplish with these supervisor services? So today within the curated space, um, we are primarily focused on, um, or I should say not really focused on, but we've we released so far are going to be um, three different S3 uh, compatible object stores. So these are operators that get deployed as supervisor services, and then they allow a consumer to go into their supervisor namespace and request buckets. So they'd be able to self-manage that um, S3 experience. We have a uh, backup and recovery. We have OCI image registry. We have some L7 functionality using Contour and Envoy. Um, we have uh, some flings that are coming out around uh, Argo CD, so primarily around CI CD GitOps patterns. But if, if we're really looking towards the future, this is an ever growing ecosystem. So we're constantly looking for partners. We're constantly going out and finding engineering teams who are interested in bringing their products into this space. So that catalog is going to continue to grow and it's going to grow even faster because we now have this support in VDS for the vast majority of our customers exist. And it sounds like that, you know, you as a consumer, uh, you'll be able to accomplish these things without maybe having to uh, build a, a, a sort of write a lot of code or is is that, do I understand that correctly or? Yeah, I mean, it's re a really easy way to think about it is you're building a, a cloud platform with Lego pieces where you build it to meet the needs of your consumers. And those consumers using Kubernetes APIs can directly go in, they can request those custom resources, they can then manage the, manage them completely within their own supervisor namespace, which really is that primary mechanism for frictionless self-service, which is mm -hmm. the end goal of all of this. Interesting. So just on a personal level, Jeremy, uh, what excites you the most about this latest advancement in, uh, I mean, in your Kubernetes, Kubernetes integration? Yeah, I, so what excites me the most is that I, I this technology, I think, is going to be critical in bringing um, VI admins who may not be familiar with Kubernetes and making them more familiar with these advanced patterns and making it so that they are able to achieve outcomes that they never could have imagined before. And we're going to be able to do this in a much larger um, subset of our customer ecosystems, because now you can do it in those BDS-based supervisors where the vast majority of these customers currently are operating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's something we talk about a lot, about how uh, you, know, you can stand up a, maybe a separate Kubernetes environment, or you can take advantage of what you've got, right, with vSphere. Uh, bring up, you know, the, the, all the v, VI admins who already are familiar with vSphere, they have all developed all those skills, they can leverage those skills, and then more easily sort of transition into uh, maybe a, more of a Kubernetes uh, platform operator, and, and also make it easier to work with uh, the DevOps folks too. Yep. Uh, so what, um, so where can people learn more about this? Um, so the first place that I would send you to is going to be the Managing Supervisor Services with vSphere with Tanzu. This is on the VMware Docs page. Um, but we are also in the process of creating some blogs that are going to be specific around um, this topic. But we're also going to be looking at providing some details on how to consume supervisor services that are flings. So allowing you to do some experimental work in that space and kind of provide direct feedback to us. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, and and for that as well, we will uh, add the link to the documentation, the relevant area of the documentation into the YouTube description as well. Um, and with that, thanks, uh, Jeremy. We've come to the end of this episode. Um, thank you, Jeremy, for joining us today. If you like this episode, everyone, uh, please join us next time uh, for another episode of Breakroom Chats. Uh, this is your host, Glenn Simon, signing off for now. Have a great day. <laughs>